Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about the filter effects Merge, Blend and Composite. These filters have in common that they combine two or more objects to form a new one. But before we get started, recall how I told you that there's a background image and a background alpha which we can use as input but before we do, we have to apply a trickety trick to the SVG file. So I already have a empty Inkscape file open and I'm just going to save it as combining objects.svg and then I'm going to close it. I'm going to find it back in my browser and I'm going to open it with a text editor. I'm on Linux, so I'm going to use gedit, but if you are on Windows, you can use it, open it with WordPad or uh, whichever, whichever uh, simple text editor you prefer. Once open, we're looking for the header SVG and shortly beneath that line, we should have the line sodipodi doc name and then the name of the SVG file. And ahead of that line, we want to add the line enable dash background equals open quotation marks, new close quotation marks. And we are going to save this text file and close the text editor and open with Inkscape. Now let's see if we can get started. In order to demonstrate the filter effects I'm first going to draw a rectangle and a, an ellipse. I'm going to demonstrate merge first. Merge just simply combines two objects into one. I'm going to go to add effect merge and I see that the uh, effect doesn't require any parameters. As input I'm going to select source graphic. In order to specify the input I click on this triangle and drag a line to source graphic and we see that another input triangle appears. So for second input I'm going to choose image and let's see what happens when I apply the filter. The circle is put behind the blue rectangle. So what happens in merge is that the two sources are combined but the source which is on the first input it goes on the bottom and the second input goes on the top. And if I added a third object, it would go on top of that. So if I switch these two around and apply the background image first and then the source graphic second, then the source graphic is on top. So next I'm going to demonstrate the blend filter. First I'm going to disable the merge and I'm going to enable blend. I'm going to click on blend and I'm going to click on add effect. And now I want the background image as the first input. Click on the triangle and drag to background image and the source graphic as the second input. And we see that we have a similar effect as merge, but the difference is that we have now got a mode uh, parameter. And we have a choice between a number of modes. We've got normal, multiply, screen, darken, and lighten. If I select multiply, what happens is that the two colors are combined. The red with the blue is uh, resulting in black. If I select screen, the 
a red and a blue combine to form pink. The red lightens the color underneath. We have darken, which is very similar to multiply, and we have lighten, which is very similar to screen. The difference between the two is not very obvious, so I'm not really going to go into the technical details of exactly how these resulting colors are calculated. Finally, the composite effect also combines images, but it does not combine the colors like Blend does. It combines them in, in the same way that the Boolean functions do. Remember, if I go to Path and I have the options Union, Difference, Intersect, Exclusion, etc., these kinds of functions are used for composite. Now, when it comes to adding the background image as a source for a composite, it's a bit complicated to demonstrate it because the filter does not affect the background image. So instead of using the background image as a source, I am going to use an image effect. So I click on image and click add effect and the image I'm going to choose is the same uh, holiday photo which I used in the previous exercise. And when I apply, I see that the bounding box will be filled with this image. Now I'm going to add a composite effect and I want to combine the image as the input. So I click on this triangle and uh, drag up to here. And as the second input, I want the source graphic, the ellipse. And I see here that as second input, the ellipse appears behind the picture. Now, what parameters do we have? We have the operator, we have over where the first image is, the first input is shown over the second image input. We also have in, and in, in the two images, the two objects are combined where the second input is used to determine which part of the first input can be seen. The out function shows uh, the situation where the objects are combined so that the bottom object hides the top object. You also have the a top object, which is similar to in, i.e. the bottom object uh, determines which part of the top object is visible, but in this case the bottom object remains visible as well. And then you have got XOR, which is similar to exclusion. Only the parts where the objects do not overlap are shown. Finally, we've got arithmetic. Arithmetic allows us to modify these parameters K1, K2, K3, and K4. K1 uh, determines to what extent the parts which where there's an overlap is visible. So if I increase this, the red and the picture both increase in intensity. The K2, if I increase it, the intensity of the first, the top image will increase. And K3, the intensity of the bottom image will increase. And if I increase K4, it's a constant where everywhere in the image the intensity will increase. So it's perhaps still a bit abstract, but don't worry, we will practice with practical exercises in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson. Bye bye.